Okay, so y'all want to live on the lonely red planet, right? So let's see how life on a Mars colony would be like. First thing, how are we going to reach there? For this, we have the Mars colonizer, Elon Musk. SpaceX's Starship project is planning to send humans on Mars. Starship is the biggest and the most powerful spacecraft ever made. Its height is 121 meters and has liftoff mass of 5,000 metric tons. The fully reusable Starship system uses on-orbit propellant transfer to enable the transport of up to 100 people to Mars, and it's going to carry more resources tan people towards Mars. Many such spacecrafts are going to be launched at one single time, maybe hundreds. Even after having such powerful rockets, the Mars trip is not going to be easy. It would take around seven months to reach Mars, and the astronauts would to live on Mars for at least one year for it to come closest to Earth. And this is a very long time period. Astronauts would suffer from several health issues due to very low gravity. Now let's look at the habitability of the red planet. Mars is a really cool planet, not because it looks cool, but because of the temperature. The temperature on the planet could go as low as minus 60 degrees Celsius, which is really cold. In the peak summer, the temperature would go about 20 degrees, which is good. Also, Mars has almost no or very thin layer of atmosphere. It consists about 95% of carbon dioxide, which is actually dangerous. Although Mars doesn't have flowing water, but it has it in the form of ice. Scientists believe that billions of years ago, Mars would have looked like this. It would have water and maybe life too, but now it's just a dry, barren, big rock. So now let's see how are we gonna actually live there. We couldn't make Mars habitable very quickly by just dropping nukes. So initially we would have to live in big and transparent domes. Yeah, now this is a nice idea to live in small domes and walk inside it freely without spacesuits by creating artificial atmosphere inside it. But again, carrying any large structure to that planet is very hard. Instead, we could just make some robots which could 3D print the whole bidings using the material available on Mars, like the Martian soil. It could also be cost efficient and less time consuming. And there is one company called the AI Space Factory building such domes. They will build some very strong structure using minerals available in the soil to make an egg-shaped dome. The reason behind it being egg-shaped is that it would sustain in some extreme atmospheric conditions. Inside these domes, we could get oxygen from the underground ice. We could also transform it into liquid water. We would also have to put devices to control the temperature inside it. We could also grow plants in the controlled atmosphere, which will give us food for our survival. Also, one day on Mars is very similar to that on Earth, which would make it easier for humans to adapt on the new planet. And for the power supply, we would definitely have to depend on giant solar panels. So before going ahead, please do subscribe our channel because it takes seconds for you, but it matters a lot for us. This was all about doing this thing in an artificial manner, but can we something that can create an atmospheric layer on Mars naturally and eventually be ready for life? Let's see. The process is called as terraforming of Mars, and let's see how it will happen. One way of doing so is to import ammonia to Mars. Large amounts of ammonia are likely to exist in frozen form on minor planets orbiting in the outer solar system. It might be possible to redirect the orbits of these or smaller ammonia-rich objects so that they collide with Mars, thereby transferring the ammonia into the Martian atmosphere. Ammonia is not stable in the Martian atmosphere, however. It breaks down into nitrogen and hydrogen after a few hours. Therefore, the nitrogen and hydrogen would be much useful for atmosphere. Another way of doing so is by using orbital mirrors. Mirrors made of thin, aluminized PET film could be placed in orbit around Mars to increase the total insulation it received. This would direct the sunlight onto the surface and could increase Mars's surface temperature directly. The 125 kilometers radius mirror could be positioned as a statite, using its effectiveness as a solar sail to orbit in a stationary position relative to Mars near the poles to sublimate the CO2 ice sheet and contribute to the warming greenhouse effect. However, certain problems have been found with this. The main concern is the difficulty of launching large mirrors from Earth. 
Do you know that Mars is the second darkest planet in the solar system? So we would have to absorb the sunlight coming towards its surface, and microbial life forms such as algae could do this thing for us. If algae or other green life were established, it would also contribute a small amount of oxygen to the atmosphere, though not enough to allow humans to breathe. The conversion process to produce oxygen is highly reliant upon water, without which the CO2 is mostly converted to carbohydrates. In addition, because on Mars atmospheric oxygen is lost into space, this would represent a permanent loss from the planet. For both of these reasons, it would be necessary to cultivate such life inside a closed system. This would decrease the albedo of the closed system, but would not affect the albedo of the planet as a whole. There is one more interesting way to terraform Mars to restart its magnetic field. Yeah, I know that it is just impossible for our current technology to do so, but we could contact some very advanced alien civilizations and ask them to do it for us. Okay, I was just kidding. But we can do something. During the Planetary Science Vision 2050 workshop in late February 2017, NASA scientist Jim Green proposed a concept of placing a magnetic dipole field between the planet and the sun to protect it from high-energy solar particles. It would be located at the Mars-Lagrange Orbit L, 1 at about 320 R, creating a partial and distant artificial magnetosphere. The field would need to be Earth comparable and sustain 50 MT as measured at one Earth radius. The paper abstract cites that this could be achieved by a magnet with a strength of 1-2 Teslas. If constructed, the shield may allow the planet to partially restore its atmosphere. So this was all about the Mars mission. After all life, there would be miserable. Some of the first people would have died and live in extreme circumstances, and this process would take decades or even centuries to be completed successfully. So if you want to go on Mars and return alive, subscribe to our channel and send this video to your friend. Thanks for watching.